In a small town in Pennsylvania, Ange was filled with excitement and a bit of apprehension as she prepared her five-year-old daughter, Maddie, for her first day of kindergarten. Like any parent, Ange dreamed of her daughter thriving in school, absorbing new knowledge, and forging friendships. The transition to kindergarten is a significant milestone, and for Maddie, it symbolized the start of an adventurous journey into the world of education and social interactions. Anja's hopes for her daughter were high, and she eagerly anticipated hearing about Maddie's new experiences and achievements. As days turned into weeks, Anja was reassured by Maddie's apparent enjoyment of school life and her budding friendships. However, this sense of normalcy was soon to be disrupted by an unexpected turn of events. One ordinary day, transformed by an extraordinary incident, Ange received a phone call that would forever alter the course of their lives. Maddie's kindergarten teacher reported observing unusual behavior in Maddie during an after-school movie session. The description of Maddie tilting her head back while her arms moved in an odd, back-and-forth motion raised immediate concern. Fearing the worst, Ange wasted no time in consulting a medical professional, leading to an urgent referral to a neurologist. The urgency and concern propelled Ange and Maddie into a whirlwind of medical appointments. The initial examination by the neurologist involved an innovative approach using a pinwheel to potentially trigger Maddie's symptoms. This, along with an MRI, led to a diagnosis that was as bewildering as it was frightening for Ange, Maddie was suffering from absence and petite mal seizures. The revelation was a stark contrast to the normalcy they had known, plunging Ange into a world where her primary focus became her daughter's well-being and treatment. Armed with a diagnosis, the doctors prescribed medication with the hope of controlling Maddie's seizures. Ange clung to the hope that this treatment would be the key to restoring Maddie's health. However, reality proved to be more challenging than anticipated. Despite the medication, Maddie's seizures persisted and even intensified, defying the doctor's initial predictions. This unforeseen development led to a realization that the initial diagnosis might have been incomplete or inaccurate, prompting a desperate search for an effective treatment. As Maddie's condition seemed resistant to the initial treatment plans, her neurologist embarked on a trial-and-error journey with various medications, each attempt met with the hope that this time, relief would be found. Ange, steadfast in her resolve, stood by her daughter through every step, her determination fueled by love and the unwavering belief that a solution was within reach. This journey through uncertainty and the quest for answers highlights not only the challenges faced by families navigating complex medical diagnoses but also the profound bond between a mother and her daughter. Anja's story is a testament to the resilience of the human spirit and the enduring hope that even in the face of adversity, a path forward can be found. Regrettably, Maddie's health situation deteriorated over time. Within a brief time frame, she was prescribed around four different medications aimed at controlling her seizures. Unfortunately, these medications failed to alleviate her condition, and worse, several induced adverse side effects. Alarmingly, Maddie exhibited allergic reactions to one of the prescribed drugs. Subsequent EEG examinations showed normal brain activity, yet there was something peculiar about Maddie's condition that puzzled the doctors. Ange, driven by a mother's relentless concern for her child's well-being, embarked on a quest to seek out the most capable medical professionals and the most effective treatment for Maddie. Their journey led them to the pediatric neurology department at Hershey Medical Center, only to find that the solutions they sought were beyond reach there. Undeterred, they were directed to seek expertise at CHOP in Pittsburgh. By this stage, Maddie was experiencing as many as 15 seizure episodes daily. These episodes were not only physically incapacitating, rendering Maddie unable to move or speak, but they also involved involuntary movements of her limbs. Adding to Anja's distress was the realization that Maddie retained full awareness during these seizures, a fact that deeply saddened her. Ange was perplexed and heartbroken by the escalation of Maddie's condition, which had progressed from a few manageable episodes in kindergarten to the current state of frequent and intense seizures. Determined to uncover the root cause of Maddie's distressing condition, her parents made the difficult decision to withdraw her from school to focus wholly on her health. Despite an initial video monitoring attempt at Hershey that yielded no answers, and she captured a video of one of Maddie's episodes on a follow-up visit six months later. This video would lead to a shocking assertion from a doctor, who suggested that Maddie's symptoms were psychosomatic and recommended psychiatric evaluation. 
Faced with this dismissive diagnosis, Ench stood her ground, adamant about not leaving the hospital until a proper diagnosis was made. Amidst this tumultuous period filled with anxiety and uncertainty, there was a glimmer of hope in the possibility of consulting with a movement disorder specialist, known for his expertise but seldom available, making his consultation a rare opportunity. In what seemed like a stroke of fate, the specialist, Dr. Kaufman, was present at the hospital on the very day their paths crossed. The anticipation of meeting Dr. Kaufman was agonizing for both Maddie and Ange, but eventually, they were informed that he was available to see Maddie. Dr. Kaufman extended a warm greeting to them and proceeded to conduct a thorough evaluation to diagnose Maddie's perplexing condition. Upon reviewing a video that Ange had shared, Dr. Kaufman was able to swiftly pinpoint the issue that had been previously misidentified by other professionals. Their daughter Maddie, who had been living under an incorrect diagnosis, was finally correctly diagnosed with paroxysmal nonkinesogenic dyskinesia PNKD, thanks to the expertise of their very own medical detective, akin to the fictional character, D.R. House. This correct diagnosis marked a significant turning point for Maddie and her entire family, shedding light on the mysterious condition that had plagued her. In a subsequent appointment, Dr. Kaufman delved deeper into the nuances of PNKD, offering Maddie's family a more comprehensive understanding of the condition. He explained that for some children, the frequency of seizures could diminish or even cease entirely around the onset of puberty, while for others, the condition might escalate. He highlighted the absence of a definitive cure for PNKD and underscored the disorder's inherently unpredictable progression, which understandably added to the family's anxiety. Maddie's case was particularly challenging due to the erratic nature of her episodes, which could unpredictably span from mere minutes to several hours in duration. These frequent and unpredictable seizures were a source of constant concern, especially during Maddie's elementary school years, leaving Ange in a perpetual state of apprehension about receiving distressing calls from the school. As time progressed, there was a noticeable shift in Maddie's condition, her episodes grew less frequent, albeit longer in duration. Dr. Kaufman attributed this change to the dynamics of how the channels connecting Maddie's brain cells operated, occasionally resulting in temporary paralysis. Despite the myriad obstacles Maddie and Ange faced, their journey was punctuated with moments of insight and unexpected developments that deepened their understanding of PNKD and how to navigate life within its constraints. A remarkable milestone was reached by the end of Maddie's seventh grade year when she successfully completed the year without experiencing a single seizure. This achievement, once thought impossible by Ange, was met with overwhelming joy and relief, marking a potentially pivotal moment in Maddie's battle with PNKD, possibly signifying the ameliorating impact of puberty on her condition. Overcome with emotion, Ange described this moment as one of the happiest in her life, second only to the joy of her children's births. Today, Maddie's life has significantly improved, with follow-up medical appointments now spaced years apart instead of the frequent visits that once dominated their schedule. As Maddie grows older, her condition will continue to be monitored, but she currently enjoys a fulfilling life as a vibrant 13-year-old who faces life with unyielding resilience and a contagious sense of humor. Ange proudly shares that Maddie has taken up roller hockey and frequents the ice rink, showcasing her multifaceted talents including an impressive singing voice, though she prefers to keep her performances away from the public eye. Maddie's indomitable spirit, her ability to find joy and laughter in the face of adversity, and her capacity to brighten the lives of those around her have rightfully earned her the title of her mother's hero. After watching this story, what do you think of? Then there is an another story about single mother Josette Duran's son's strange behavior. Let's expect what will happen. In the bustling life of a hard-working single mom, mornings can often feel like a pressure cooker of tasks and responsibilities. Among the chaos of preparing for work, locating a child's elusive sock, feeding the family pet, and assembling school lunches, their daily to-do list seems never-ending. So, when Josette Duran, a devoted single mother of living in Albuquerque, New Mexico, was approached by her son with a request that initially puzzled her, it was just another twist in her already hectic routine. Her son, Dylan, an empathetic and kind-hearted eighth grader, had suddenly asked if she could pack an extra lunch for him to take to school. Initially, Josette's mind was awash with questions and concerns. Was the lunch she prepared each morning not satisfying enough for Dylan? What could possibly warrant the need for two lunches? 
However, nothing could have prepared her for the heartfelt reason behind her son's unusual request. Dylan had observed a classmate who seemed to bring little more than a meager fruit cup for lunch each day, leading him to deduce that the boy's family might be struggling financially. Reminded of her own past hardships, including a period of homelessness that she and Dylan had endured, Josette felt a surge of empathy. Those days had been some of their toughest, marked by isolation and shame, as they hid their struggles from friends and family to avoid the stigma associated with asking for help. Inspired by her own experiences and motivated by the values she had instilled in her son, Josette decided to take action. She understood the importance of kindness and generosity, especially towards those who find themselves in difficult circumstances. These principles had always been at the core of her parenting, as she aimed to raise Dylan to be a compassionate and caring individual. Josette's response to her son's request was to not only pack an extra sandwich but also include additional snacks and uplifting sticky notes to brighten the boy's day. This gesture extended beyond merely providing a meal, it was a message of hope and solidarity to a family in need. Despite the anonymity of the boy and his family, Josette's act of kindness demonstrates the profound impact that empathy and generosity can have on the lives of others. Through this experience, both Josette and Dylan showcased the power of compassion and the importance of looking out for one another. Their story is a testament to the idea that even small acts of kindness can make a significant difference, reinforcing the values of empathy and support within their community. Josette, the dedicated girls volleyball coach at Dylan's school, had long been under the impression that the school administration was unaware of a young boy's challenging economic circumstances. It wasn't until the boy applied for the school's reduced meal program, a step he took after encouragement from Dylan, that his situation came to light. Josette expressed her strong belief in the school's commitment to student welfare, emphasizing, that school is a place where no child is left hungry, they look out for everyone. But this poor boy must have felt too ashamed to ask for help. Over the weeks, Josette took it upon herself to prepare an additional lunch for the boy, an act of generosity that eventually led to a heartfelt encounter with his mother. The meeting, which Josette approached with apprehension, fearing the potential for misunderstanding in a world where acts of kindness can sometimes be met with suspicion, turned out to be incredibly rewarding. I was worried about overstepping, about how she might perceive my help, Josette shared. To her relief, the boy's mother was profoundly grateful, even offering to reimburse Josette for the cost of the lunches, an offer Josette graciously declined. For us, it was just an extension of our normal behavior, she explained. However, when Josette shared pictures on Facebook of the extra lunches she was preparing, her intentions were misinterpreted by some. Critics accused her of seeking recognition. Josette clarified her motives, explaining that the post was meant to celebrate her son Dylan's empathy and awareness of others' needs, especially given his own experiences with severe bullying. We've faced tough times ourselves, so we understand the importance of lending a hand, Josette remarked. In a heartwarming twist, the girls' volleyball team Josette coaches rallied to raise $400 as a gesture of appreciation for her kindness, a sum she couldn't in good conscience keep for herself. Demonstrating her selflessness once more, Josette directed the funds to the school cafeteria, to be used to clear any outstanding balances on students' lunch accounts. Kindness doesn't have to be monetary. It's about making a bad day better for someone else, Josette reflected during an interview with Inside Edition. Inspired by the Duran's example, Caitlin Hardy, a perceptive kindergartner from Vista, California, took it upon herself to make a difference in her own community. A student at Breeze Hill Elementary School, Caitlin was moved by an overheard conversation of a mother struggling to afford her child's after-school program. This moment of empathy showcases how the Duran's altruism is sparking a chain of kindness, encouraging even the youngest among us to be observant and proactive in supporting those around them. In a world where adult conversations might drift over the heads of many children, Caitlin found herself deeply engrossed. Her mother, Karina Hardy, recounts how Caitlin's curiosity blossomed into a barrage of questions about the hardships faced by others. Karina tried to instill in her daughter the importance of compassion and generosity, emphasizing that not everyone enjoys the same fortunes. I just tried to explain to her that sometimes people aren't as fortunate as we are, and that it's important to extend kindness and support whenever possible," Karina explained. 
This conversation sparked a fire in Caitlin, igniting her desire to make a tangible difference in the lives of those around her. In the chilly month of December 2019, Caitlin embarked on a heartwarming venture. She set up what could only be described as the most charming hot cocoa stand, complete with steaming cups of cocoa, warm cider, and freshly baked cookies. The stand was not just a feast for the taste buds but also a feast for the eyes, attracting passers-by with its undeniable cuteness and the sweet treats on offer. Caitlin's initiative wasn't just about selling hot drinks and snacks, it was aimed at raising funds to ensure that her fellow students wouldn't have to endure the discomfort of hunger during school hours. If they don't, their tummies grumble, Caitlin voiced innocently, underscoring her understanding that every child deserves to feel content and cared for. Caitlin's compassion and entrepreneurial spirit paid off beyond expectations. Jamie Phillips, the Director of Child Nutrition Services for the Vista Unified School District, revealed that Caitlin's stand raised around $80. This remarkable sum was sufficient to clear the lunch debts of 123 students at Breeze Hill, showcasing the significant impact that even the youngest among us can have on their community. Principal Lori Higley shared the ripple effect of Caitlin's act of kindness, with other students inspired to think of ways they too could contribute positively. It's a testament to how a small act of kindness from a five-year-old can profoundly touch the lives of others, Higley remarked. However, Caitlin's journey of giving didn't end there. Fueled by her initial success, she aspired to tackle a larger challenge, erasing the negative meal account balances across the entire Vista Unified School District. Dubbed Kiki's Kindness Project, this ambitious venture aimed to gather over $7,700, a goal that, while daunting, didn't deter Caitlin and her supporters. During a special fundraising event at a trampoline park, Caitlin managed to raise $636 toward supporting crucial Breeze Hill after-school programs at risk due to budget constraints. These programs were not just extracurricular activities but lifelines for many students and their families, providing essential learning and growth opportunities outside the conventional classroom setting. Kiki's Kindness Project continued to evolve, with Caitlin and Karina leading the charge. Their next initiative, Cases for Love called upon the community to donate and used suitcases and bags for foster children in San Diego. This initiative aimed to provide these children, who often face the instability of moving from one home to another, with a sense of dignity and respect. Through their continuous efforts, Caitlin and her mother have not only provided immediate relief to those in need but have also spread a message of love, empathy, and community support that resonates far and wide. Despite the inconvenience of constantly being on the move, Caitlin and Karina were determined to contribute to their community by ensuring they participated in a charity drive. Their efforts turned out to be incredibly fruitful as they managed to gather an impressive collection for those in need, 44 backpacks, 10 suitcases, 3 large duffel bags, 10 sizable rolling backpacks, along with a variety of smaller bags. As fate would have it, their charitable event coincided with Random Act of Kindness Day, a detail proudly shared on the Kiki's Kindness Project's Facebook page. Caitlin played a significant role in transporting the substantial collection of bags to the Palomar Family YMCA and YMCA Youth and Family Services, organizations that expressed immense gratitude for the significant donation. Remarkably, all of this was initiated by the compassionate spirit of a five-year-old, Caitlin, whose actions deeply moved her parents. In an interview with 103.7K Sun, Karina expressed how inspired she was by her daughter's selfless nature, stating, my husband and I were so proud of her. She has even inspired me to extend a helping hand. The Kiki Kindness Project gradually drew attention, amassing $17,308 from 74 contributors by February 2020. Caitlin's early demonstrations of humanitarian concerns have many eagerly anticipating her future contributions to making the world a better place. We need more kindness in the world, Karina reflected, a sentiment that often finds its purest expression in children who have faced their own challenges. One such inspiring child is Addie Bryan, whose arrival brought immense joy to her parents, Jeff and Julie Bryan. However, their happiness was quickly tinged with concern when they discovered Addie was born with hip dysplasia, a clubbed foot, and her knees bent backward due to a rare condition known as Larson syndrome. The prognosis was grim, with doctors uncertain if she would ever walk. From just days old, Addie embarked on a challenging journey, 
undergoing her first of many surgeries and receiving approximately 70 casts throughout her early years. Despite these hurdles, the Bryan family placed their trust in the renowned Texas Scottish Rite Hospital, celebrated for its expertise in pediatric orthopedic conditions. Though the road was fraught with uncertainty, the Bryan family never lost hope. By the age of seven, Addie had developed a resilience and determination that set her apart. She didn't let her physical conditions define her and strive to live as any other child would. Impressively, Addie's perseverance led to significant improvements in her mobility. While her legs remained slightly bent, her ability to move and engage with the world around her had vastly improved, much to the amazement of everyone who had followed her journey. Through their stories, both Caitlin and Addie exemplify how the spirit of kindness and the will to overcome adversity can inspire communities and bring about positive change, she began dedicating more hours to gliding through the streets on her scooter, embracing the freedom of the open air, rather than remaining confined within the sterile walls of the hospital. But her newfound mobility didn't stop there, she discovered she could run as well. It was clear to all who knew her that she had made remarkable strides since the challenging days of her early life. There was an undeniable sense of good fortune surrounding Addie, a testament to her resilience and the support she had received. Yet, amidst this positive turn of events, a persistent unease began to take root in her thoughts. As Addie's eighth birthday approached, she felt an overwhelming sense of gratitude. The Scottish Rite Hospital had given her the gift of mobility, allowing her to run, jump, and play freely. It was a gift she wished every child had the privilege to enjoy. One day, her mother, Julie Bryan, discovered Addie earnestly counting her modest savings. To her mother's astonishment, Addie revealed she wasn't just playing with her money, she had a mission. She wanted to donate her savings to the Scottish Rite Hospital to make a tangible impact. Encouraged by her mother, Addie decided to set up a lemonade stand with a few friends in an effort to raise additional funds. Despite their hard work, they only managed to gather $60. Realizing the need for a more impactful approach, Addie crafted a donation sign and positioned herself at a busy street corner, braving the intense Texas heat. The community's generosity was heartwarming, with both neighbors and strangers contributing to her cause. Over several months, Addie amassed a considerable amount of donations but was determined to make an even larger impact as her birthday neared. In a strategic move, Addie and her parents partnered with the Cotton Patch Cafe to host a charity event. Addie's creativity shone through as she set up a prize wolf to attract attendees, reminiscent of Pat Sajak's iconic game show. Her efforts culminated in an impressive $19,500 raised for the hospital by her eighth birthday, a sum that far exceeded everyone's expectations and highlighted the significant impact charitable donations have on the hospital's operations. Addie's story quickly captured the hearts of many, gaining widespread attention from local news outlets to national publications like People magazine. An appearance on live TV was a memorable birthday gift, but an even more extraordinary surprise was on the horizon. Stephanie Bryger, the hospital's vice president of development, informed the Bryan family of an anonymous donor who, inspired by Addie's story, contributed an additional $50,000 in her name, bringing her total impact to nearly $70,000. This contribution would greatly assist in providing essential medical equipment like casts and prosthetics to other children, fulfilling Addie's birthday wish to help others. Addie Bryan's story is a testament to the power of youthful determination and generosity, underscoring that age is no barrier to making a significant difference in the world. Her story also serves as a reminder of the potential for social media to amplify positive actions, as seen in another instance where 18-year-old Tyrell Wolf received an unexpected friend request from Joanna Marchand, a young woman from the Philippines he had never met. Initially skeptical and dismissing it as a potential scam, Tyrell's curiosity was piqued years later when he received another request from Joanna, leading him down a path of Unexpected discovery, Joanna Marchand had successfully captured Tyrell's fascination, drawing him into a world of intrigue and connection that was hard for him to ignore. However, his parents, cautious and concerned about the unpredictable nature and variety of individuals one might encounter on the internet, were understandably apprehensive about their son's newfound interest. They feared for his safety and well-being, given the anonymity and potential risks associated with online interactions. Despite the mystery enveloping the situation, 
Tyrell found himself unable to shake off the urge to uncover the truth behind the enigmatic message he received. With a mix of curiosity and hesitation, he ventured into the unknown by opening the message request and, without further ado, clicked confirm. Eager for answers, he initiated a conversation with the young woman on the other end. Her reply, however, only deepened the mystery, leaving Tyrell perplexed. Do you recall the Samaritan's purse? she asked. Tyrell was momentarily taken aback, wondering if this was some sort of cryptic message or perhaps a riddle. Then, like a light bulb flicking on in a dark room, realization dawned upon him. The Samaritan's Purse referred to a charitable initiative, one that a seven-year-old Tyrell had participated in through Operation Christmas Child, sending a box filled with gifts to an unknown child. The question that now nodded him was why, after over a decade, was this stranger from the Philippines reaching out to him about a Christmas gift? More puzzling still, how did she come to know of his involvement? The mystery began to unravel when Joanna revealed her identity. She was the recipient of Tyrell's shoebox gift those many years ago. Tyrell was astounded by this revelation, yet a shadow of skepticism lingered. In a digital age filled with deceit, how could he be certain Joanna was genuine? Seeking verification, Tyrell probed for details about the shoebox's contents, but Joanna's initial inability to remember specifics did little to assuage his doubts. Just as Tyrell was about to dismiss her claims, Joanna mentioned a distinctive item that only the true recipient could know, a photo of a young Tyrell dressed in a cowboy outfit, set against a wooden backdrop. This undeniable evidence confirmed Joanna's authenticity and marked the beginning of an extraordinary narrative between them. Contrary to what might have been a fleeting interaction, Tyrell and Joanna nurtured their connection, discovering shared passions and interests that fueled their daily conversations. As their bond deepened, they transitioned from Facebook acquaintances to close friends, laying the groundwork for a remarkable relationship. Motivated by the desire to meet Joanna in person, Tyrell embarked on a savings plan, culminating in a journey to the Philippines after graduating high school. The 14-hour flight from Idaho was a daunting endeavor for Tyrell, who had never before traveled abroad alone. Nevertheless, the warm welcome he received from Joanna and her family upon arrival made every challenging moment of the journey worthwhile. What was initially planned as a brief visit evolved into an extended stay of a month, during which Tyrell and Joanna's relationship flourished, transforming from a virtual friendship into a profound and tangible connection. Despite the inevitable farewell, Tyrell was resolute in his determination to return. Through diligent work and saving, he managed a second visit that only served to strengthen their bond and love. As their relationship grew, Tyrell took a significant step by learning Tagalog and respectfully asking Joanna's father for her hand in marriage. While her father consented readily, her mother's apprehensions about the pace of their relationship cast a shadow of doubt. Undeterred and deeply in love, Tyrell sought to bridge the gap by inviting his own father to the Philippines, hoping his presence would alleviate concerns and unite both families in support of their union. After numerous discussions spanning several weeks, Tyrell and his father were able to finally win over Joanna's mother, convincing her to consent to their marriage proposal. In a turn of events that marked the culmination of their love story, Tyrell and Joanna tied the knot in October of 2014, merely five months following their engagement. The wedding ceremony was an intimate affair that took place at the ranch owned by Tyrell's parents, encapsulating the essence of simplicity and warmth. In a move that reflected the couple's unique journey together, Tyrell and Joanna decided against traditional wedding presents. Instead, they made a heartfelt request to their guests. They asked each attendee to bring along a shoebox filled with gifts, intended for donation to Samaritan's Purse, an organization emblematic of their extraordinary relationship's beginnings. Adding a personal touch, they encouraged their guests to include a note within each box, sharing the story of Tyrell and Joanna. This gesture aimed to illustrate the profound impact that a simple act of kindness could have on someone's life, echoing the very essence of their own love story. Following their nuptial celebrations, Joanna made the significant decision to leave her life in the Philippines, embracing the prospect of a new beginning in Idaho with Tyrell. The couple settled into a serene country home, which wasn't quiet for long. Before they knew it, their home was filled with the joyous sounds of their first child, a son they named Harlan John Wolfe. 
Despite the demands of work and their new roles as parents, Tyrell and Joanna have remained committed to a heartfelt tradition. Each year, they continue to deliver shoeboxes, a testament to the enduring influence of their unique beginning. The act of sending these shoeboxes may seem modest, but for Tyrell and Joanna, it holds significant meaning. It serves as a reminder of their journey together, a journey that showcases the incredible possibilities that can stem from a single act of generosity. Through their story and ongoing tradition, Tyrell and Joanna demonstrate the far-reaching impact of kindness, proving that sometimes, the smallest gestures can lead to the most profound outcomes. That's all about our story, if you like this story, please like and subscribe to the channel, and see you in the next story.